We've been following the Ted Cruz spectacle after he and his family snuck away to Cancun while his state faced a crippling winter storm that left millions without power. Rightfully, he was blasted with criticism, but fortunately, his new communications director came to his defense. Um, yes, Senator Cruz is in Cancun right now, um, but, you know, here at his offices, we say big whoop. Senator Cruz deserves to relax, unwind, unplug, recharge, you know, like you would a power outlet um, or his power grid's going to go out and we can't be having that. You know, that's too important. So he's got to take care of his lot, which comes from the inside. And um, it's just like, why can't he have his eat, pray, love moment like everybody else can? It's just funny to me. It's funny that whenever he's here in America and he's doing his little jokes on Twitter, everybody says, go away, Ted, we hate you. But then when he goes away to Cancun, everybody says, well, where's Ted? Why isn't he doing his little jokes on Twitter? Now, sometimes you just don't know what you got till it's gone. And that should be a lesson for the Americans um, wondering where Senator Ted Cruz is at this morning. <laughs> it's a joke. I repeat, it's a joke. Ted Cruz's actual new comms person is a former Trump flack. The video you just saw is of the brilliant comedian Blair Erskine. And that's just one of the parodies that's gotten millions of views and helped her build quite a name for herself in recent months. And here's the real thing. The comedian herself, Blair Erskine, joins me now. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. We're all very excited. My entire team were very excited <laughs> to hear you were coming on the show tonight because we've enjoyed your videos. How did you get started making them? Did you ever imagine how popular they'd become? How many people would be fooled by them? Yeah. Oh, thank you for having me, first of all. I'm so excited to be here. Um, yeah, this was a mistake. It wasn't supposed to happen. This was never supposed to happen. <laughs> uh, I started making them at the beginning of, of lockdown. And, um, you know, I was doing what I'm doing now, which is just making fun of people in the news. And my friends would watch them and say, haha, this is funny. And um, I just that put me on top of the world. I was like, oh, 30 people think I'm funny. Um, and then in July, the uh, the Costco guy went viral. The guy who was like, I feel threatened because someone asked him to wear a mask. And uh, I was like, I'm just going to pretend to be his wife, see what happens. And and then this happened. And I've just been competing with myself ever since to see who else I could I could trick, I guess. <laughs> Did anyone from Team Cruise or the GOP reach out to you thinking you were real? No. I wanted them to. I wanted <laughs> to get a cease and desist, but no, no one acknowledged it at all. It was it was very disappointing. It was very disappointing. <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned the Costco wife uh, from the guy who refused to wear a mask. Uh, let's play that for our viewers. Have a listen. I know that a lot of y'all have seen uh, that video of my husband Dan asserting his American rights in Costco. So um, I just really, I just want to clear a few things up about it, okay? Dan was not threatened <laughs> in the Costco. I know that he was like, I feel threatened, I feel threatened, but he was not threatened at all. He wasn't scared at all, were you, babe? No. No, see, I feel threatened is, um, it's actually our family's crest, so we just say it sometimes, like he said it to me in our wedding vows, you know? He was like, I feel threatened, and I was like, I do too. <laughs> Blair, do we know if this man oh even gosh. has a wife? How do you end up choosing characters like that and others? I Googled beforehand if he had a wife, and he didn't appear to have a wife. Uh, so I, I just wanted to make sure that she... That was my first, you know, one of my first videos, and so I just wanted to make sure I wasn't offending anyone. Now I really don't care if they exist or if they don't exist. Uh, but, um, you know, the thing about these Republican men that I, I tend to make fun of, they don't really let their wives or their daughters speak. Like these women don't have voices, public voices at least. For example, I, I, I did a video about Tom Cotton. I pretended to be his wife. And I've tried to find yes. a video online of this woman speaking and she just doesn't. And so it's very easy to slip into those characters and, and just make up a persona because I truly no don't know what them. they're like at all. Yeah. Yeah, no one's ever, never, no one's I, ever heard the I real deal. I like them, too. Um, exactly. I, I mean, when I watched your Ted Cruz thing, I was like, that could be a Ted Cruz comms person. It's not beyond the realms <laughs> that they would offer that uh, justification. Um, one of the other people you did is Marjorie Taylor Greene's daughter. Let's have a listen to that one. Hey, I know I made a video last week saying that my mom, Marjorie Taylor Greene, isn't crazy, and I just want to apologize for that because she is crazy. She's not qualified to be in Congress. She shouldn't be in Congress. She should be at an Olive Garden 10 minutes before it closes asking to speak to the manager. That's where her, that, that, that's her natural habitat. 
And today, Being after Marjorie Taylor Greene Green posted a sign, and today, after she posted a sign outside of her office that read, there are two genders, male and female, trust the science, uh, to that you tweeted, Marjorie Taylor Greene belongs in a used car commercial yelling at people to come buy Toyotas. Uh, is there a danger that, yeah, we laugh at Greene and how mad and almost beyond parody she is, but we did the same with Trump and he ended up becoming president? Yeah, yeah, I do think there is a danger. Um, and I try to be aware of that. Uh, it's hard, though, whenever these people are whenever she does anything, you know, it's hard not to comment on it. But I think we do have to be aware of uh, the content we're putting out and what we're saying about her, because um, you're right, that's how Trump got into office. We didn't take him seriously. And, and we just, you know, used him as a, a punchline, basically. And then look what happened. So, but gosh, it's hard not to make fun of her when she does stuff like that. My God. And you can tell she eats it up, too. The Oh, yeah. <laughs> she did after 100%. putting that sign up. She literally... She's the worst. Yeah, she exists to troll. I mean, that's what she does. The own the libs, I think, is their favorite phrase. You grew up around Republicans, I believe, but how did you end up not just being a progressive, but deciding to target Republicans uh, with your humor and comedy? Gosh, I mean, I think it's just that that's what I grew up in. And so it's what I know. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of in my blood, these these women, this persona that I just slip into so easily. It's because I grew up in a very small town, very sort of Baptist centric town, you know, where uh, these things were just it's just second nature to me to make fun of these people because I know them. Uh, I think that in order to make fun of something, you kind of have to have an understanding of that thing. And I, I unfortunately have uh, quite a deep understanding of these types of people. So I think it, that's just, you know, I have another friend, Kylie Brakeman, who does a great job of, you know, making fun of liberals. And it's because she grew up in a town that was full of liberals. And so I think it's just sort of my background and it's, it's kind of easy for me. I don't really Although, have to reach. It's interesting you say you have a friend who makes fun of liberals, which is fine. There's lots to make fun of liberals about. Um, but there is this debate right mm -hmm. now about quote unquote, conservative comedy. What is your view on the idea? You know, you see parody sites like, what is it called? Babylon B trying to be the onion and just, it's not funny. And there's this argument from some that just, there is no conservative comedy. It's a contradiction. Do you agree with that? Do you share that view, contentious view? Yeah, I, I saw people, I saw those think pieces and I really did try to think of a conservative comedian that I, I found funny or, or a comedian, I guess, that does what I do, right? And they make fun of... Um, liberals, but as a conservative, and I can't, I can't think of one. And I don't know what it is. I think maybe I try not to punch down too much. Like in the characters I do, I try to make, you know, the women smarter than their husbands or their fathers and, and kind of turn it on its head. And I feel like maybe conservatives, their go-to is to just go straight for like the, you know, gut punch and the not bullying, but I think it's definitely more mean spirited. And maybe that's why I don't know. I, I read some Babylon B articles and I didn't understand. I, I don't know how that website exists. There was one about AOC tying her shoe and it was like, AOC can't tie her shoe because she's stupid. And then somebody wrote that piece that made yeah. it past the editor and onto the internet. I, I'll never understand it. <laughs> I never understand it. Conservative comedy, quote unquote. Are there any topics or people that are off limits for you? You mentioned that you, Republicans are the people you know, you grew up around them. Is there a backlash? Are there friends or family members you're worried about offending? No, not anymore. Not not friends or family members. I mean, I say that, but I did get off Facebook this year because I didn't want to deal with them, uh, <laughs> with the backlash from these people I grew up with. So maybe there's a little bit of a fear, but for the most part, I don't I don't think about that too much. Uh, my my family is pretty liberal for the most part. I mean, I've got plenty of conservative family members, but you know, the people that love me, they they love me. Um, as far as public Fair figures, enough. I try not to, <laughs> I, I try not to, um, I don't know. I try not, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Like there was a politician whose uh, daughter had died a few years ago and someone was like, play his daughter and a fictional daughter, you know, but I'm, tr I'm no. not trying to be a bully and, and tap into any trauma. Definitely. So that's where I draw the line, I would say. Well, what you are doing, we're enjoying very much. We're out of time, but thank you so much for joining us tonight to talk about it. We appreciate it. Blair Erskine, uh, thank you for being on the show.